Welcome back, guys, to the Predator Alliance League 2020 Summer. And, of course, this is all powered by, uh, sorry, this is all powered by uh, Globe Telecom Twitch Student and presented by Globe Prepaid's Virtual Hangouts. We have been your shoutcasters, and we will we will still be your shoutcasters for this final game we have today. I'm Hyron. With me is Frizerk. Game 4, Hyron. Yeah, we just got back uh, from... Teletigers and Warriors, juking that out. Yeah, and uh, that game, uh, UST being UST, I would say is the theme of that game. USC was able to put uh, a really good showing for themselves, um, showing that they can be proactive as a team as well. It's just that UST is just too used to it uh, mm -hmm. already. Um, some stuff to pick up for USC there. Also, USC too, they did get caught out a bunch of times by USC, but let's uh, talk yeah, about the uh, game right now. Yeah, their next game is still still uh, going to be Group B, and it's going to be MU, or Mapu University Mages, MGS, uh, versus DLSU Viridis Arcus. So this is something I'm looking forward to as well. We've seen two games from MU. We've seen DLSU last week with a very, very good showing uh, from Duckman on that Ola, uh, not Anivia rather. So uh, we're going to see what they bring to the table. Once again, every single game in a single round robin uh, is super, super vital, especially so uh, when you're like 1 1 and you're still on, like on teetering on the balance. I think that's really important uh, to really get your game up. So let's get right into the draft here. Definitely, uh, and I have to agree with you. We have to see if uh, Duckman Quack will uh, get let through by mages for their game Close against game. the LSU. Do... Yeah, it could warrant enough of a ban there, but there are a lot of other, like more standard bans that just have a lot of more raw power than Nivia does. If mages is, if the mages are confident that they can deal with Anivia then they can I, I think it's okay to let it go through but we're gonna have to see how viridis arcus deals with uh, the bands here against mages definitely agree and um the lsu really showing their respect uh, against jacob here banning out his zoe jacob is the highest ranked player on uh, the beiges yeah. team Hovering around yeah, one game. is also terrifying as well. He's played Akali both times uh, in these games. So it could warrant a ban as well, especially with a new buff onto that champion. We could be seeing uh, the ban here uh, against mages. We're going to have to see Mordekaiser banned out, uh, making sure that Ursus has as small of a champion pool as possible. Yeah, and Ash being banned by Redis Arcos here. They don't want one of the most potent uh, and reliable engaged yeah. champions on an AD carry on that matter to fall in the, into the hands of the mages. So pretty spread out right now in terms of uh, bans, actually. So not a lot of Thresh. focused bans on mid, but okay. Thresh coming out, yes. Okay, Thresh, a uh, very high priority uh support all around uh like in most of the other uh, international leagues that we've seen so not super surprising and i'm willing to bet that the Viridis arca support is proficient on that as well so last yeah. game we get on the karma yeah this is definitely a target ban on the ventus right here and uh that, oh wukong ban okay so another deny of yeah. engage on the uh, side of pages yeah. shadow blitz does play the wukong they played it in their debut game in alliance league uh they had a pretty good showing on it just it's very very okay. but the rakan being prioritized mm -hmm. on the blue side here for mages it did get buffed, but I'm not sure if the buff is enough to push it into must-have territory. But let's see. This does tell us a little bit about the game plan here for the mages. But it just Arcus takes this opportunity to pick up the set. They have one more pick coming in their first rotation of picks. We'll see. Right, and this this tells me that admit on support, uh, confident to run that Rakha, no matter what the comp. Uh they would be facing here and the lsu set this left open uh, they choose to flex that lock in and flex that i would say caitlin being hovered to a really good choice for ad carry okay. right now and yes i was kind of sweating at a kogma hover but the caitlin is definitely <laughs> more potent here and it's lots of range very safe 
And this Rakan gives this Rakan a run for its money as well. Even if you dive in, 90 caliber net is there. But of course, the Rakan side is left open. And and yeah, I think I think uh, Major MGS's uh, bot lane is gonna get locked in here. Uh, standard combo Rakan Saya, very much much more efficient when combined together. We're gonna have to see Definitely. what their next match will be. Oh, oh. switching between Renekton and Maokai here, two champions of arguably really yeah. different roles, but Renekton seems to be getting yeah, it does got get locked in, and uh, let's see what the LSU answers for their yeah. third pick. For the previous game where Renekton was picked uh, in the first rotation, this gives Viridus Arcus a lot of options to be able to deal with it. And maybe they're picking up this Renekton, maybe they're expecting Duck, uh, rather Ursus to uh, pick a champion similar to Gangplank, if not Gangplank himself. Oh, no, fine. okay. So, Ursus? Could be Ursus uh, on that Malphite, but I feel like I feel like or, it I is. I mean, Renekton. I guess a Renekton. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, if I mean, if Malphite does end up uh, having a safe laning phase, like not going zero and three miraculously, yeah. miraculously um, against it, he's not a job. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I mean, they just haven't locked in their jungler yet. Yeah. And there's that's, a lot open. And that's going to really influence that relationship between that top line. If it is top uh, Malphite, uh, but that's like the most likely thing that comes to mind right now. Kha'Zix, of course, banned against uh, the mages. Okay. So... <laughs> they will be respecting that Anivia in the second rotation. They just Maybe prioritized the first three bans that they game. have a lot more than this uh, Anivia. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, I feel like, man, this this set flex is just so powerful. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like he's he's probably the best flex in the game right now, because he can just be Definitely. placed anywhere uh, save for EDC. Yeah, there, actually, some... not even not even if if Senna gets locked in, for example, then you know. That's but uh, but there's a reason where like uh set has like a hundred percent presence in 10.15 in pcs summer 2020 as well mm -hmm. as like 70 percent globally uh or at least in uh, lpl lck lec you know the three best uh leagues out there a very contested pick very versatile brings so much to the table we see so many like haymaker Ooh, yeah. shields coming out but leo mark going for that oriana uh, rather duckman with the oriana um uh, it, it does play into that, you know, uh, Shockwave into Unstoppable Force uh, could be the pickup here. Maybe even if you if you get like the dream scenario where you oh. showstopper someone into the Shockwave into the Unstoppable Force, but Mages, they see big ults on Viridus Arcus' side. Silas can, Silas is a pretty good pickup against that. I really like this Silas pickup actually mm. uh, for the Mages. It, um... He has a lot of choices, like you say, and uh, it gets paired with the Olaf getting locked in. So it looks like Images with their team comp, they are uh, ready and prepped to go in and to run at DLSU yeah. right mm -hmm. here. But... Uh, Volibear was left open, and if Olaf, if Invicta here plays Olaf, then that's also taking away the Olaf from DLSU's uh, jungler here, Eternal, since he did play it. In the previous game, but it is going to be Graves going to be the pickup here for Viridus Arcus. It seems like they they're thinking, okay, we have enough uh, CC, we have enough of initiation, we can go for the damage here with the Graves just to complement uh, that set and that, uh, or rather, yeah, that set and that uh, Caitlyn with Ventus playing on that set as well. So. I think the LS use comp, the, it seems like this Malphite is really falling into the hands of Orsos right here against this Renekton. Uh, I'm not sure how he's going to sur survive laning against a Renekton and an Olaf, but we'll just have to see. Maybe he picked up some really cool wave management strats <laughs> uh, in the past week. I don't know. Maybe, but, maybe, uh, maybe he knows something that we don't, but this isn't looking good here for the top side of Viridus Arcus. 
yeah, there are. I can see some uh, lines of play where Eternal is able to influence that, but against the Olaf and the Renekton, it just seems like suicide for uh, a Graves to try and like maybe counter gank or uh, influence that lane. So it's gonna be and, tough here for the archers. Yeah, and uh, on the other hand, like Malphite ulting someone. Not really sure if he's gonna be built damage or tanky, but uh, Malphite ult being created for Saya ult, for example, I'd say that's pretty worth it for the Saya right there. Yeah, definitely. Because there's really nobody else going to be hard engaging on you, save for the set flash into showstopper, but um i can't help but feel this draft is favored uh heavily towards the mage yeah yeah for, yeah me, me too that's what i'm definitely feeling here direct just uh straight up uh just having the safety of desire rakan having that strong top jungle uh, combo to really choke out ursus and the silas the silas has a lot of good targets here showstopper uh, Shockwave, Unstoppable Force, and in a pinch, even even Ace in the Hole and Collateral Damage could be good pickups for that uh, ult stealing. So Magus has a lot of options when it comes to dealing uh, with how Viridis Argus, but I, I can see DLSU's team comp here popping off in a few instances if Magus isn't able to play uh, the jungle correctly. Alright, two things though for the side of DLSU. They have the Caitlyn. It's super oppressive. The uh, thing is, she's against Sire Khan and her support is set. Not really the best support, I would say, to pair with the Caitlyn. But um, I think that's what we have to say. You know, humans are such frail, right. uh, <laughs> frail and creatures. fallible creatures. The hedgehog knows. And let's the see what Jamie knows. has to say to, about this. So it's going to oh. be Riddus Arcus on the right side, the red side, and me, MGS on the left side, the blue side. Random what? hand uh, seemingly Shane fixing the... Adjusting the, 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 the water the, water totem. Water. <laughs> the totem. Oh, 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 oh. Shame he did Okay. I think oh. he's fine, you know. Oh, go Ooh, straight for the archer. Okay. The Riddus Arcus team here from DLS, you will be the prediction right. for Shamey. So he's going against the grain here. Uh, Shamey says, "Okay, you guys think MGS is favored. I, uh, Shamey thinks Veritas Arcus is favored, but it's time for you guys out there, the viewers, for uh, to speak out and say who's gonna win. Predict who's gonna win here for our hashtag Globe Prepaid Virtual Hangouts. The hashtags are hashtag MGS win uh, for the mages from Mapua." And DL, hashtag DLSU win for the Viridus Arcus gang from DLSU. So pair that with the hashtag, the hashtag low prepaids vir uh, virtual hangouts, and you'll get a chance. Maybe win 200 uh, PHP worth of Garena shells. Yeah, and um, show your support. Uh, these two teams, they're practically even on paper, I would say, a bit more skewed towards. Uh, MGS for mid, but everywhere else. Uh, DLSU, in terms of macro, I think they have that down really well because um, I'm the coach of LG and they've scrimmed against uh, DLSU. That seems to be their strong point. So I want to see what sort of macro they can pull out given their team comp, which seems a bit, I, I would say, interesting. Let's just put it that way. MGS on the other, other hand, their secret weapon, Jacob, he is uh, on the Silas. And uh, we all know what Silas can do. Uh, let's see if he can pop off in this game. Yeah, and like you said, it's a really good pickup, especially against the comp that Viridis Argus uh, put up. And uh, he's very scary on the Akali, right? And I think right. the same principles apply to a Silas. You, you, he goes in... Uh, he goes in, deals a lot of damage, is able to sustain himself with a Kingslayer. So perhaps some of that skill that he has in Akali it will reflect on the Silas as well. I'm really excited to see how this game plays out. Like I said, uh, if 1-1 one, one and 1-0, one, both of these uh, teams are hungry for wins. They want to be able to walk out of this, out of today, of this week's uh, Predator Alliance le uh, League with another win on their belts. Yeah, and uh, something interesting is if Mages actually wins this game, 
and puts the LSU into a one-one situation, then it it opens up the possibility again for Group B to come into like a three-way tie next week, yeah. uh, the week after next yeah. week. So it's gonna be tough. And when there's a three-way tie, that isn't like the term. Uh, yeah, when there's a three-way tie, it just becomes so hectic. Competition becomes tight. I mean, if it's just a two-way tie, you can just do it with head-to-head. But, man, uh, I wouldn't want to be in a position where I have to go through a three-way tiebreaker. But I think we're going to load onto the Rift very, very soon. I actually already hear uh, them loading onto it. So, yeah, let's get right into it for our fourth and or third and final game for today's stream for Predator Alliance League. This is going to be the Mapua University Magus versus... DLSU Veritas Arcus. So show your support in the chat. The chat rally is going up to the first five minutes of the game. After that, all entries will be locked in. So just get your predictions out there, guys, and show your support as USC, or rather, no, MGS on the blue side and DLSU on the red side. Yep. And it looks like nothing, uh, no shenanigans uh, happening right now before the laning phase for both teams as both just attempt to secure their ter- standard territory on both sides of the river. Uh, no early wards seem to be coming out as well. Graves, let's see if Eternal decides to put up, pick up that sweeper and he does. Uh, this, this tells me that he's looking to get an early gank. Yeah. And um, he's running Flash, not the controversial Ignite Smite Graves that we've seen. So, maybe, oh, but... Oh, is maybe they could find someone here against Ursus. Yeah, this is really late. late. They're like late. a couple seconds off, and they have been scouted out at least by Ursus. So, this is two seconds late on the uptake, but if they can take it and defend their own red buff, then this is something big against the Graves, who wants to really right. farm up ahead. Really, really and fast. Lo- and look at this. They see Eternal uh, going across the map and taking the red buff of the mage side too. So they have information of where Graves is. This is really good warding coming in from the mages right now. And uh, this is this is good because it allows uh, some form of protection for the bot lane. Although they really don't have much choice here on what they have need to can do. Because the the map is basically divided into two right now, virtually. and it's both value and information neutral. They know exactly where Eternal is, and the LSU has an idea of where Invicta is going uh, is going through. So uh, they will both be able to clear out, uh, get their both of their buffs out, and get a couple camps along the way. Eternal here is definitely not going to be able to get something in uh, under this turret, but we're going to have to see how they play out the next few minutes here, because. We're already seeing Shadow Blitz really wail onto Ursus, preventing him from getting the CS, this juicy, juicy minions, and I think this this isn't too surprising. Oh, oh, that is gonna be a on here onto Duckman. Lots of damage coming in from Jake. Um, oh, that's gonna hurt. And Duckman's not able to trade back enough damage, especially with Jacob on the corrupting pot. It's a full combo from uh, that Silas over there in Jacob's hand, so Konting tikim, <laughs> kumbaga, on the side of Duck Man. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't take taste duck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's gotta be really careful about that. Uh, that Abscon can just come out of nowhere uh, from Jacob, and after that, that's gonna be a trade you've already lost. So, Duck Man needs to be a lot more careful here. Also, William Mark opting to run that call, first item. I guess he spared that with. Uh, that uh, I forget this uh, this rune, cut down, cut down. So yeah, because uh, Caitlyn has one of the lowest base HPs in the game. Running call along with cut down just gives her a really good amount of damage and sustain in lane. Mm-hmm. And that just lets her take uh, take over this bot lane even more. You can see Crescent admit really feeling the pain oh, here. Man. Look at the CS difference. That is like yeah. two and a half waves, maybe, and that yeah. At this point, Crescent admit they have to be really raring to go here. They want to reach their power spikes. They want to fight back against Leo Mark and Ventus here. But there's gonna be a fight here. The Rock and the Croc juking it out in the top lane. Shadow Blitz has the initiative, pushing Malphite away. Ursus feeling the pain and still quite behind, but 
doing doing relatively okay considering the matchup abscon that does go through for jacob who has to be careful about a turret range gets blocked by the minions and duckman is favored in this trade at this point but seems like both of these teams lots of fighting uh between the solo laners just making sure that their presence is felt in this lane Right, and uh, gold is even right now, but the junglers are seen on the opposite sides of the map, so control has uh, switched from um, bottom top side. And uh, it looks like um, Invicta decides to take an early okay. dragon. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think that's good. You know, you already know that Eternal's top side. They saw him through the shrine, saw him through the wards on the tri brush. The very quick ocean break here, especially it is the Olaf. Uh, it's definitely a good call there by the mages. It's not like uh, Leo Mark has been pushing Krez and Admit down to the turret again. So, yeah, good on Krez and Admit to be able to put the wave around neutral position there so that Leo Mark and Venta can't interfere with that Ocean Drake take. And now, the thing is, uh, DLSU right now is known to rotate their bot lane to uh, the Herald, but this first Drake has been taken taken quite early. And if they decide to rotate up this early in the game to take the Herald, then that kind of frees up uh, the bot lane of the mages to go to yeah. catch up and farm, maybe take tower plating. So we'll have to see what they decide on doing. But uh, already a big CS lead being secured by Leo Mark and support Ventus right here, along with that call on top of that. You know, yeah, it's really that so, choice on whether you want to press your advantage here bot lane or try and go for that Herald. It is going to spawn quite soon, and not just yet on the map, but that's a decision that DLSU might have to make here. Because they're in a pretty comfortable lead, but nothing stellar coming in. Um, it's like nothing out of the ordinary, so to speak, when it comes to Syracon versus the Caitlyn. Mm -hmm. And now, meanwhile, on the other side of the map, Orsus uh, is uh, making a fashion statement right now. They're rocking Long three armor. <laughs> armors. And not surprisingly, mm -hmm. so... Oh, look at that. Again. Shadow Blitz clearing the wave there with Call the Meek. Just making sure that's that why. Okay, man. That, that's why. That's why. <laughs> yeah, triple cloth armor keeps him alive, but Shadow Blitz is like, nah, you ain't got that drip, bro. Shadow Blitz, I have an axe. An axe, I'm pretty sure, beats, be beats t-shirts. <laughs> I mean, it's a surfboard right now, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, but in yeah. any case, it's a it's a pretty quiet early game, I would say. I mean, Olaf, I expect a bit more. I mean, the proactivity came in the form of the Ocean Drake, yes. But oh, as we see, Jacob, you kind of Jacob. Jacob is gonna give him that oh, amount of power. Yeah. Stole the ulti, but not oh, enough to wow, get wow, wow. and in. Very close for both of these guys. One small mistake would have meant the death of either of these mid laners. If Duckman was able to land that uh, that ultimate onto Jacob, Jacob would have died. Yeah, that would have been a clean kill. It would have been so clean, but uh, wow. Oh, okay, Jacob, oh, wow, that's really aggressive coming in from Jacob. Jacob. Ashing for that, but runs into Invicta and mm. Roma Invicta indeed as he takes a kill onto Eternal. Jacob saying no, 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 oh. you can't flash into me like that. I'm a sidestep. Oh. You're yeah, that was game. super greedy from Eternal, especially against a Silas who does have the Kingslayer, can get the heal up from, uh, especially if he's very low. Did I think he? I think uh, he was just hungry for it. I mean, I mean, yeah. he was ready. He was ready, but then Invecta was there too, so mm -hmm. it didn't uh, pull through for them in the end. But that's yeah. the first kill falling into the hands of the Mages, and it not only the Mages onto Jacob. That's so scary. It's, it's scary, yeah. That could tip the scales in his favor when it comes to facing off against Duckman after this recall. So we're gonna have to see what he buys here. And looking pretty good so far for the mages. And Krez is even able to slowly close that CS gap between him and Leomark. Yeah, kudos to Krez right now. Uh, I mean, that 450 gold is gonna cash in soon for Leomark, but... Still, catching up to this extent is a really good showing for him. It is, uh, on paper, the bot lane of the mages is, seems to be the weakest link, but uh, it seems like they're doing a really good job 
yeah. holding their own against the bot lane of uh, the MSU. Shadow Blitz, okay, those cloth armors doing work here oh, for Ursa. And he's starting to lose, and he has a Bramble Vest too, more importantly, to really cull the healing of that Q from Shadow Blitz. I mean, he is 24 CS down, but what matters is he did not surrender any kills. That's really what's important here. Immediate aggression coming in from Admit to try and take down Duckman. That is going to be Shockwave coming in from that Orianna, but Admit finishes off, uh, finishes off the kill there with another kill going to Mages. Pro -wax yeah, really decisive move there uh, from Admit. Uh, really popping that, that uh, the quickness really early and uh, collapsing onto Duckman with no flash. So really good call right there to punish that yeah. flashless Orianna. Unfortunately, the kill didn't fall into the hands of uh, Jacob once more, but the kill is a kill. So, and Shadow Blitz fighting it out. He's not scared of. Hey, and right now, Ursus has like four different pops. Right now, he's shopping from all the clothing stores. Got the bramble vest. Got the cloth armor, and it is really effective at making sure that Shadow Blitz can't just walk over him in this lane. But still, still very much in favor of the Renekton here. Oh. Mu Mage is going for the kill here. Can they go for it? Showstopper actually does not take anyone with him. Eternal is going to get taken down by Shadow Blitz. More damage coming through. Shadow Blitz healing up with Call the Meek. Can Jacob get the kill? Abscon actually goes to Ursus, not his target. Oh boy. Indeed. And Duckman is going to fall down as Shadow Blitz takes him down. Dives back into the fight. And this is going to be the signal to take the Infernal Drake as DLSU falling apart against MU's presence. So. What looked to be a proactive play on the side of the LSU, we, we did see Ventus and Eternal walking up the mid lane like that, like that, but they just get turned on by the whole party of MGS, double TPs coming in, uh, one for each side, and uh, that was a beautiful Ragnarok coming in for Invictus. He was able to not let himself get dragged into the team of the LSU. Yeah. because of the showstopper from, from showstopper Ventus. Showstopper goes black there for... Yeah. So, really nice. Five, time. five and no. Uh, 3k gold lead and two drakes uh, being secured by MU right now. And Things are looking good and their team comp centered around, uh, I would say, this Silas just because Jacob's on it. It's, it's, it's showing right now in the early game. Mm -hmm. And with a mid lane turret going down, that means Jacob is free to roam here. All those cloth armors mean nothing oh, to the no. squad. To the Kingslayer, and Jacob gets another kill down his belt, chaining Ursus down. And there's gonna be more plates onto this top side turret. And MGS, they go to steal away resources from the LSU jungler, contesting this red, denying it from Eternal even. So right now, MU definitely in the driver's seat. I really like this proactive. Oh my god. Oh boy. Eternal, why were you lingering there? Easy stun from Shadow Blisters and an easy Epscon coming in from Jacob. And oh look my god. Epscon does miss, but can it push through? Charm comes through with a quickness, and Jacob gets another kill. Just MU charging in. Steam train. Full power. Full speed ahead. And they are dominating this game so far. Holy cow, they're, they're just using all of the tools available for them one after the other to run at the team of DLSU. And it's 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 hard because looking at the team comp of DLSU, yes, it's kind of well rounded out with that uh, bot lane pressure from Caitlyn, that stabilization for Oriana in terms of team fight and scaling, Malphite for engage, she grapes for DPS, but if I mean, where's the peel? It's it's gonna be really hard to peel for your team, especially if you're just getting picked off one by one. There, I mean, mages they're just just they're just uh, revving their engines right now. Eight and oh, wow! Yeah, full speed ahead here for the mages. They've maxed out on their magical power, and they're really pressing the advantage that they have. They know that their best chance here is to just to run them down with the Silas, Olaf, and the Renekton, and it's working out beautifully for them, because Admit's been so proactive uh, with the kill so far, but Jacob is really the core of this team. 8, 4-0-4, uh, oh, that's 100% kill participation so far. Yeah, and uh, I think the LSU right now, they just have to kind of stop the bleeding and wait for their Oriana and Graves to scale up a bit, mm -hmm. because right now, Caitlyn, 
I don't think she can do much right now. Uh, the lead that she would like to press uh, on what? on the major side, it's not gonna happen because Jacob is four and oh, Shadow Blitz is three and oh, Saya has scaled and bought an essence reaver for herself too. So yeah, let's see what the uh, DLS you can can do to stop the bleeding right now. Mm -hmm. It's really tough of a situation here, but you're right. They have, uh, they have the potential scale, and they have two marksmen. They have Duckman on that Oriana. If they get a good shockwave combined with the unstoppable force into what more AOE damage from Eternal, that could be it for MU. But like I said, their threats are resilient. Jacob, even if he is like their highest damage dealer right now, you're not going to be able to take him down immediately like you would Krez. And even then, uh, they're quite safe, so to speak. Right, definitely. Also, just to point out, Caitlyn, Leomark decides to uh, pick up that Storm Razor's Edge, which is, for me, a really good item on Caitlyn. But she has to be, at the very least, one or two kills ahead for her to abuse that but i i personally would have gone more of the scaling route like pick up that ie secure that mid to late game a bit for her team but, um it's just gonna make it harder for dlsu to stop the bleeding up. yeah it's really tough here for dlsu but at least there's no huge kills coming from mu just yet but it's inevitable. MU is going to have to pull the trigger at some point, and DLSU, will they be able to survive that and strike back with, uh, on their own as well? Uh, they're going to mm, try nice. here. Shadow Blitz, Eternal, could be the target of a gank here. He's going to get slowed down by that smoke screen. He's going to pull out the Dominus to really damage his versus here. Teleport coming in from MU, but oh, he might not no. Eternal, he's going to get taken down almost, but oh, oh please, boy. Stealing the OP straight into the collateral damage, takes down Eternal, gives him a taste of his own medicine. Shockwave oh. goes wide here for Duckman, Quack Quack, and MU. They're looking to take down this top lane turret while the mid lane MU still pushing it far and deep. Disaster strikes the team of Gillespie right there. Maybe if this Renekton had no kills in his pocket, sure. But what's what's Malphite gonna do? No damage. What's Graves gonna do is zero and three prior to that play. They're not gonna be able to kill that crocodile. Executioner is calling as well, just to uh, cut down Shadow Blitzes and Jacob's damage, and even Invicta. So that's really delaying uh, the scaling that they would want in a different situation. Now Mu gets the Herald again, and. That's just going to op uh, open up a lot more plays for them as well. If he just goes straight into a turret, make some plays, take it down, get some kills. I would have to say that right now, it's if it's not perfect, then it's it's as close to perfect you can get for MU. All of the gold is on Jacob right now. Secondly, on this Renekton, you want the gold to be on two. Their bot lane did not give up any kills. They have three Drakes and two Heralds to their name. All of the mid lane, uh, no, not all. T1 and T2 down for DLS used mid lane and only the T2 towers for top and bot remaining for them. Well, DLSU has failed to stop the bleeding here. What's going to be the next step here for the mage is to try and close out this game before DLSU can uh, slowly crawl back into it. Uh, team fight. Hmm? Orion ult into Malphite into Graves and everything. They have to they have to make it perfect themselves. If the mages were able to deliver a pristine early game, then DLSU needs to deliver a pristine team fight for them. Meanwhile, the mages, if they want to finish this quickly and prevent the LSU from getting a chance of, because the longer it goes on, the more time that the LSU has to set up that perfect play that then get them back into the game. So, MU, they have the Rift Herald. They can try and stuff, uh, break a hole in the LSU's base, and that could mean uh, an unrecoverable uh, defeat there for the LSU if they play it right. Yeah, and playing it right, is, it, it looks to be a really hard uh, task for DLSU right now as Jacob comes in again on Eternal and just 
deletes him outright. No need for any ults. Steals that mass fight, unstoppable force for a good measure, but it's not really needed. Eternal is really squishy right now. What's he gonna do with uh against like, this full AP build on Jacob? It's just really tough here. I don't even know if DLC you can take that kills since MU is either very sustainable or very safe. Like Krez, no death so far. And they're just gonna go come knocking onto this mid lane turret, the doors of the LSU. Can they hold off? Can the archers, can Viridus Arcus uh, hold off this? Like, that hell they, was taking it out. Yeah, they managed to stop their mid lane tier 3 from falling down, but, but inevitably. The waves, the waves okay. on the side lane. The waves in the side lanes. They get one tower down on the bot side. The top side is their next play. And possibly the Baron after that. Just deny outright vision completely uh, on the side of DLSU. And force them to overextend. Yeah. And DLSU right now, they, they need to use the, the Orianna ball to try and check these brushes. They really have no control over their own jungle just yet. Uh, they're trying to take back some territory, but MU is just snuffing those candles out in the jungle making sure the dlsu their jungle is gone their minions are getting cleared out and their turrets are getting swarmed by these waves and two big things coming up right now one is already there the baron is the first the second is the dragon soul i wonder if dlsu will opt to make a trade right here honestly I'd, i i would take the baron just to help them survive a little bit more usually a team would prefer to take the soul because it's a permanent buff that but they can't just they can't afford to be playing greedy right now for that so let's see yeah. it's like mu they have confidence that a dls you cannot go for that baron uh, especially with jacob he doesn't need to be there for the drake just yet oh, oh no god catches leo mark he's gonna get oh. uh, whittled down here by eternal but there's a lot of minions blocking oh, his way. Oh, wow. Flash is away from the unstoppable force. Shockwave is going to get uh, be able to finish him off, but MU, they haven't actually finished the Drake at that point, so that could be a chance here for the LSU to get a little bit of breathing room, not get the Baron, but able to get control back on, that, on, that, on their own jungle. Okay, so the thing is, Jacob's life, yes, it is extremely valuable they were able to take him down but that's four ults on the side of dlsu and two flashes just to take down jacob yeah, that could and... be the signal for mu to make something happen around baron while dlsu's ultis are down because right, right now it, it looks to be so i mean shadow blitz right now split pushing with teleport off cooldown and uh, pings are coming down too onto the Baron pit. So I don't know if DLS you can do anything about this. Duckman's ult seems to be going off cooldown soon, but Unstoppable Force is still a bit uh, less than half. Very, very, very close, but MU, is after clearing this, they might be starting it pronto. And they're really trying to control the vision around here, and they are going to start it indeed. DLS you. Right now they're blind. Let's see what they have yeah. to do about this. I mean, the bot lane of the LSU has channeled the recalls. I don't think they plan to contest this. They, uh, they can't do anything about it at this yeah. point. But this, this Baron Pit is such an ideal spot for that DLSU combo, but even if they do get it off, I am not sure if they would have been able to get the Baron and take back the win. But now, MU, they're going to come knocking on DLSU's doors. Can they resist? Can they repel the assault here? from MU's Baron up minions and their cloud soul uh, champions. You know, this this cloud soul is going to be ridiculous for Silas. He's just, like, just going to keep stealing ultimates and ultimates while, the, while his opponent's ultimates aren't even up yet because of the cloud soul. Yeah. They, they come marching power, down right now. Power of that Silas and DLSU has to be wary of what ult he's carrying. And Shadow Blitz has just been... Oh. Push the side lanes as well. Yes, you're getting a lot of poke out, unable to get a shockwave just yet, but it's coming soon. And oh no, did you four. see that? <laughs> Double four is the pickup here for Jacob, and that's gonna be dangerous. Uh, they can get these uh, deepest, deepest tourists here for DLSU. Uh, they don't need to go for the game winning team fight just yet, but that seems to be where it's leading right now. 
Maybe they're gonna pivot onto lanes here or just escort their minions. They're looking really dicey here for DLS2. I don't think they. I think they already uh, missed the opportunity to go to get back in this game, yeah. conceding the Baron. Or it just has to pull the trigger onto this these four players. But oh, no they way. are gonna try. But Krez pulls the trigger first. Shockwave is gonna catch Krez and Jacob, but it's way too late. The rest of MU already wailing down on the Veritas Arca squad, and that is gonna be a clean ace here for MU. Jacob gives his life so that his team may end the game, and they're co gonna come crashing down on the nexus here of Veritas Arcus as the archers fail to hold their bastion. The mages tear it down from the foundations with their fireballs, with their spells. And that is going to be MU going 2-1, putting DLSU in the same situation they were in, a 1-1. Ooh. That's Mages cool. coming in hot. Mm -hmm. Man, uh, I think I think their future games, for their future games, teams need to think about banning that Silas away from Jacob, oh, man. Shaming's prediction rate no longer 100%. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Sucks. Wow. Okay. But Shavy. Maybe, maybe, you know, let's not lose faith in the hog. Let's talk yeah, about it in a little bit more. And in, in this case, though, humans seem to prevail. I mean, just showing their magic and, uh, Pull out a really clean game against DLS. Clean. Uh, Jacob playing that beautifully, trading well, and and working. Uh, he didn't even need his jungler that much, right? He a lot of a lot of solo kills, and once he cleared up the mid lane, able to roam around the map and take away the game from there. And I think Jacob really played him, uh, played out of his mind there uh, for the mages. But credit to the other laners as well. Uh, being able to survive that uh, lane against Caitlyn, uh, not giving up any kills, jungler being able to influence the map. As for the Renekton, well, it's to be expected, uh, the result, but she still played that pretty correctly. Right. And LSU, I think uh, they would have been able to show a really good game as well on their side. If only that really good 3-4-0 uh, uh, team fight didn't happen early on in the mid lane because from that point onward, uh, it was basically the major show. Yeah. So pressure cooker basically. They they put DLS in a pressure cooker and they kept cooking them. <laughs> yeah. And this puts British Argus in a precarious situation because now they're one one. Who are their next games up uh, against? August fifteen next week. DLSU versus UST. Uh, August 29, or is that? No, no, August 22, rather. How versus DLSU. So those are two tough games Oof. that DLSU has to win if they want a chance of staying up in the standings. So congratulations to the Mages. They put themselves up one point in this group stage. Uh, but I think that's the last game uh, that we have for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, thank you to our sponsors, Globe Telecom, Twitch Student, and of course, Globe Prepays Virtual Hangouts. We have been your casters for this week three of uh, Predator Alliance League 2020 Summer. I'm Hyron. With me, Wes Zerk. We'll be seeing you with more collegiate esports action.